on behalf of God's servant, the apostle over this great commission, Dr. C.M.B. Lamai, I want to welcome you to August, your month of manifestation. Put your hands together for Jesus. The Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 1, it said, and there shall be a performance. Now, whatever prophecy promises, the world that have gone ahead of you in this month of August, there shall be a performance. You will manifest testimonies. You will manifest glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everywhere you turn to, there shall be manifestation of the word of God in fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Amen. To your right, there shall be manifestation. Amen. To your left, shall be, there shall be manifestation. Amen. Before you, there shall be manifestation. Amen. Behind you, there shall be manifestation. Above you, there shall be manifestation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' precious name, you have prayer. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we are dealing with two different words this morning. Intelligence and love. We don't cut off people because they are bad. We don't, cut, we don't stay with people because they are good. We are together, we are not together because of activities. Many years ago, my, my, uh, my, my friend lost the father and uh, after the burial, we had to go for the wedding of the elder sister. And the day of the wedding, the elder sister was going to the husband's house. And she he called the elder sister and said, ah, ah, it means someone that did not experience love cannot give love. Your marriage is built on that relationship, on that love. Your relationship with people are built on that love. So if you don't know what it is, you can give it. You can give it. My wife, was my wife was teaching the first service um, on etiquette, and uh, she was talking about sneezing. sneezing. And I remember when I just married her, uh, if I sneeze for you, then I will be okay. So I sneezed one day. What's that? And I said, what is that? And we both were looking for what is that? Do you know why? Oh, my life. I never knew that uh, sneezing loud is an embarrassment to some people. So I was looking, she was looking, what was, what was that? I was looking, what is that? Uh, before she said, uh, no, you can actually do it. Uh, uh, sneeze with tease. Uh, sneeze with tease. <laughs> ah. Now, what you don't know that is wrong what you have never expressed before so if someone is a victim of brutality or your your act of no love and you're saying ha ah, this is all, and you'll be wondering what is wrong because he's normal because he has never experienced what you have experienced that's why we should not pamper our, big, our children too much if you over pamper your child and they get to her husband's house or, her, or his wife's house. Either of the two. And the other person was not pampered the way. You, Papa said, ah, baby, you, you need to open the door for me. Eh? <laughs> ah. <laughs> was, uh, what is happening here? What is happening here? What's going on here? Open the door you are not loving, you are not kind. See, till I grow up, till I marry you, nobody ever opened door for me. He said, no, no, no. I'm going to my daddy's house. See, the door is there. Go. Chop, chop. Ah, you're supposed to beg me not to go. Ah. Whatsoever you have not experienced, you can't give. And do you know what? God knows the inadequacies of man. And that's why while we are yet sinners, he commended his love to us. If man will not show you love, I will show you. You must have experience of what love is. Even after you have done everything and you have done everything and you came to ask for forgiveness, my forgiveness is an act of love to show you what it is. 
So even if man is not showing you love, Christ, God, is love himself. That is it. And that's what our scripture is saying. We should be so good. Experience the love of Christ. Madam Musa, if I correct by the name, she said, I don't know how you did it. Have you, is that, that is all? But you are consistent in your, your ways. Do you know what she said? I'm not interested in other lyrics of this song. The only thing I know, I don't know how you did it. All I know is that you are consistent in your ways. Now you shall be by singing well or not. I don't know how he did it. All I know is that what? Whatever you know is what you know. And it's true experience. I don't know what you know. I don't know what you be. All I know is that I serve a living God. I do tell people. When someone says, ah, there is no God. I say, yes, there is no God. But me, I know Jehovah Rapha. When I was sick, he healed me. I know that God. When I was the far verge of disgrace, he provided for me. Ah, see, you know God not only by name. You know him by experiencing him. If you have not experienced him, you can't tell others about him. What is your gospel? What are you telling people? You are telling them what they told you about God. It's not enough. Jesus said, who do people say I am? They say, you are this, you are that. You, 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 who do you say I am? If you have not experienced God, you can't tell people. A being, a, a, a human being, or a spirit being, or you understand. And it's also a present, continuous, uh, this thing. So, love is a being and a being. Love is who you become, not what you do. Love is what? Who you become. So, if God is love, you become love. Become love. Show yourself lovable. He that needs friend must first present himself friendly. You must first become a friend first. So you must be love. Husbands, you must be love. Wives, you must be. You don't just love. Love is not a third party. Love is who you are. We were chatting in a, a, was it chat in men's, fellow, men's service last week, and I was asked a question that, uh, how do you lay foundation for uh, some sort of family? I said, no, you don't lay any foundation. Foundation is not a third party. You are the foundation. Every man builds the family. If you are not the foundation, that means you are being the family outside you. It's about being. You must be. So love is a being. It's not a feeling. So the soul of being is a seat of intellect, emotions, and will. The soul of being is what? Intellect, emotions, and will. And what is this intellect? It's all about discernment. Discernment, right judgment. So love is discernment. Love is right judgment. Emotion. Love is possessiveness. What did I say? Love is possessiveness. Love is bonding. If you are in love, you are possessed. <laughs> you need to do some sort of deliverance from some, from some husbands or some wives before their wives can leave them. Because they are possessed. It is not only devil that possess people. God can possess you and you can be his possession. Love is, is the emotional part of being, of love, is, is possessiveness and power. That's why there's a sense of belonging and the sense of entitlement in love. I love. Said, this is my husband. This is my wife. This is my. And we see another woman. Said, ah, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? 
Because what? You have possessed. <laughs> if you are possessed, yeah, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, we have many people that are possessed. Yeah. <laughs> you are possessed. Oh, no, no, man. This is my home. Ah, Jineke, man. In Kemo. In Kemo. You are possessed. That's why sometimes you do, you do some stupid things in the name of love because you are possessed. You are possessed. How come my wife called me baby and I'll say yes? <laughs> you call me baby. I will tell you, do I look like a baby? <laughs> now, what gets people hungry when there is no love does not get them hungry when there is love. Uh, it's because they are possessed. A possessed. Ah, he's possessed. So, husband, you must be possessed. Wives, you must be possessed by love. Do you know why you are thinking of sending her away? You are not fully possessed. Mm. The spirit of love that possesses you do not possess you very well. You're possessed. So, the emotions has to do with is love is possessive and is bonding. And in love, there is will. And this will has to do with expectations and agreements. There are expectations in love. There are expectations in love. So if you don't know how to love intelligently, you will dash expectations. You get disappointed in each other because expectation, you know, expectation is high. In relations, there are expectations. So no this and no peace. Expectation. Expectation. I, shared, I said in the first service yesterday, my wife was talking to me and I was pressed my phone. He said, I'm talking to you. Maybe I said, Yeah, my son will go. I said, No. She said, Drop that phone. That's what I will preach tomorrow in church. I quickly drop it. You tell me, uh, Pastor, I'm talking to you. Drop that phone. I said, Ah. Uh, what do you mean that one starts? Ah. Do you have something to say or you don't have anything to say? And while we are still arguing and telling you, my wife will call me and say, he said, baby, I said, yes, yes, drop that phone and I will drop it. Uh, you are not the same thing. <laughs> we are possessed in different ways. There are expectations. So when you understand that your wife has expectations, you'll be conscious not to dash her expectations. When you know your husband has expectation, you'll be conscious not to. Love is not just feeling. No. You love with your senses. It is those days that love is blind. Love is no longer blind. Though. If your love is blind, why didn't you possess somebody that you don't want? Eh? A comedian said that uh, if I get to a church, and the pastor's wife is not fine. I, I, will, I will not stay there. If you know get high to see beautiful wife, how will you see the problem of my life? <laughs> what am I saying variably? Uh, pastor see better. Uh, watch I'm praying. So your speed, your 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 love was not blind to take it to where you are not going. So when you are now in a relationship, now say love is blind. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a true lie. It's a lie. Abi, it's not true. It's open high love. Try it. Leave the house tomorrow. Don't give your wife money. And there's no money in your house. I said, baby, I love you. He said, I love you too. Uh, sir, where are you going? He said, love is blind now. You are supposed to be blinded to the money. I know. You will know that love is not blind. There are expectations. There are expectations. I wonder how we live and think that there are no expectations from those that love us. Or those that we love. There are expectations. There are agreements. There are certain things that we agree can two, Amos 3, 3, I mean, can two walk together except they be agree? So there is agreement and love. 
Now, the next one I want you to understand. Love, you love in love. You love in love. Or you love from love. Whichever way you want to. You love in love or from what? I said that from the beginning. You love in love. That means you have love. And you are not loving from there. You don't act love. Listen and listen close. Giving is not love. What did I say? Giving is not love. You, there are many beggars on the way that you give money. Do you love them? Giving is not love. Because it's giving you, giving you, giving. As a matter of fact, giving has expectation attached to it. Ah, it's giving you are taking. It's giving you are taking. It's giving you are taking. Remember the day we we'll ask. Colossians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. Amplified classic. Colossians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. Also, he has informed us of your love. Now, listen to this. Colossians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. Also, he has informed us of your love in the Holy Spirit. For this reason. Now, also, okay, it's on the screen. Go back to the beginning again. Also, he has informed us of your love in the Holy Spirit. Also, he has informed us of your love in the Holy Spirit. That means you, the Holy Spirit is love and you, you have the Holy Spirit in you and you are in him. You love in him. You love in him. Let's continue. Continue, please. For this reason, we also, from the day we heard of it, that you love in the Holy Spirit, from the day we heard of that, you love that, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom, in comprehensive, in comprehensive, in comprehensive insight into the ways and purpose of God and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things. What he's trying to say that if you love in the Holy Spirit, there are certain things that you pick from the, you must pick from the Holy Spirit if you are loving Him. A certain thing, you can't love from the Holy Spirit and don't love with the character of the Holy Spirit. You can't you don't love with the fruit of the Spirit. If you are loving in the Spirit, if you are loving in the Spirit, so since we heard that you are loving the Spirit, we have been praying that these things will also be manifested in your life. You won't just love in the Spirit. You are going to make a letter asking that you may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge. There is knowledge in loving. There is knowledge in loving. There are certain things the Holy Spirit needs to teach you. Many times, I get angry over some issues, even in my house. And the Holy Spirit will tell me, keep quiet. It doesn't have to make sense. Because I'm loving in the Holy Spirit. It controls my will and emotion. So he has a, when he tells me, keep quiet, I keep quiet. Anytime I go outside that instruction, it's a sin against the Holy Spirit. And what's the sin against the Holy Spirit? It's a sin of consequence. God will forgive you sins. But listen, there are some certain sins. He will forgive you, and in love, you will bear the consequence. You are angry with your husband. And you decided to break the television. Ah, you are angry with your husband. And you set the car ablaze. And you say, honey, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and only we say, I forgive you. Even Jesus Christ said that, the Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. So, the following day, you have to go out. He said, baby, uh, uh, how, other Uber, let's go. He said, Uber, you are trekking. 
said, no, what? Okay. Uber is like 8,000, 16,000. So what do we do? So, ah, if I'd known, I shouldn't have set the car ablaze. Hey, boy, I've forgiven you now. My love, I've forgiven you. Well, listen, you will face the consequence. You will be forgiven. For three, five months, or one year, until he has the grace to buy another television, you will be televisionless. Why you now go out? You say, ah! You see what happened yesterday? It will not be preparing you. I see the pain us, I mean, they suit us. There are certain things you need to know when you love to the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. It says, You show and make obvious that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. You show and make obvious that you, you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, not written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on table, tablets of stone, but on tablets of human's art. You, now, you are letter written. What the scriptures make you understand is that when you become love, when you are rooted in love and you love through the Holy Spirit, there's no longer a piece to or there's no scripture that is written. You become the scripture that men begin to read. You are not cutting out God saying you should love. You are love yourself. And this, now, whatever you do from the point of love is a pen of a ready writer that don't write on paper or tablets, but writes in the hearts of men. That's why it's very important for you to understand love. Love. He said, for better, for stay, for worse, or disappear. In health, you are fine. In sickness, you are on your own. In riches, beautiful. In poverty, that means your parents. Let's agree now before we marry. And because you are for that, that, po, that, that possess is demonic possession. When you are possessed and you lose your senses, and somebody is telling you, don't worry. When it's okay with you, I will stay. When it's not okay, we'll go. He said, hey, let's marry first. Everything will be okay. Ah, you have lost your senses. Love, when you become love, your actions becomes you become pain. Whatever you do, you write in the heart of men. Or you write in the heart of those who love you or you love. So let's be conscious of what we do. Let's mind our actions. Now, the next one, there's a common ground where bonding will be formed. There's a common ground where bonding will be formed. <laughs> if you don't have there's nothing bad you having disagreement there's nothing bad having misunderstanding but the question is at the end of it do you agree at the end of it do you understand in every relationship you must always find a common ground that the two of you will come together to agree you can't win an argument with a customer and win the loyalty of the customer. You can't. Some of you now will say to your husband, see, I am your wife, yeah. There's nothing you can do. And, and you begin to do everything. Then you tell this one about your husband. You tell that one about your husband. My husband is this, my husband is that. You went, you have you told the village witches, you told the city witches, you told the heavenly witchcraft, uh, uh, um, um, hell witchcraft, you American demons about your husband. I said, you must do what you want. Listen, why are you doing that? Because I want him to do what you want to do. Ah, 
I want him to do what I want him to do. Uh -huh. And your husband came up. Okay. I know do. Even you yourself. I don't want again. You are not going anywhere. You must marry me by force. You don't go about killing what you love. Because at the end of the day, when what is paining you is no more there, your love is dead. That's the problem of some relationships today. The husband told me, Pastor, I find it difficult to forgive my wife. I said, you have to forgive her. And I understand what she was saying. What he was saying. I, I was to go and sort things out in the family some years ago. And the elder brother was there. So because of Awijare, what's Awijare in English? Because of uh, the woman wants to justify everything. Finish the husband before the whole brother. He said, brother, the last time, if you know what he said about you, he said this and started saying everything in between the, the, the two of them about the brother to the brother. So that the brother can see her point. Ah! I said, I was doing like this. I was doing like this. I said, Pastor, what is it? I couldn't maintain my steez. Do you know what the brother said? Called her by her first name. He said, everybody have problem in their home. Don't kill your husband for his name. Have I ever told you that my wife has, be my wife beat me before? Eh? She said, eh? I said, yes. He said, you are the one that is making noise of what is happening in your home. So don't think what you have said now will make me to hate your husband. Even what is happening in my house, did I tell you? And after a long time, the man said to the pastor, I'm finding it difficult to forgive my wife. I said, you just have to. No fight again. Be careful what you say when it is preparing you. You must have a born, a common place. Have it at the back of your mind. This is east, west. But we must have a common ground of agreement. Husband, if your wife refuses to bend, bend. Come, Pastor Smith. We are fighting. Don't beat me, you know you get what it is. We are fighting. And I discover that this height is intimidating me. Sometimes when you bend, it may not be that you bow. It might be that you want to what? When you bend, does not mean you have lost the battle. It may be a strategy. It may be a strategy. Please sit down. This is a celebration. It may be a strategy. If she refuses to bend, bend. If you he refuses to bend, bend. Is intelligence in love. Is intelligence in love. Sometimes you agree with her so that you can change her mind. <laughs> you what? You agree with her so that you can change her mind. Because if you are disagreeing with her, she will be continue to build a defense. <sighs> you know, I've started an example before here that. As a man think it, so you see, as a woman feel it, so she is. And the woman said, ah, baby, we must buy a soy B. And you are trying to tell that, ah, no, by all rational explanation, you will explain tire. Because you are the one that is logical in reasoning. They are the one that is feeling in reasoning. <laughs> because you are trying to explain to her from your radical perspective. What you need to do is to make her feel what you are reasoning. And she said, and you explain. And she's, she's not saying anything. She's not saying, no, you just have to buy it. Okay? You just bend. Somebody say bend. Uh, say it again. Say bend. Uh -huh. You just bend. I said, oh, baby, don't worry. You're going to buy it. Uh -huh, my husband, you are the Olo Worimi. 
you are the only cockroach in my cupboard that has cockroach brown and that does not have metallic green and custard yellow. He said, you are going to, you are going to buy it. You'll be happy. Just give her a few minutes and call about her head. So um, I'm going to transfer the money to your account. But what's going to happen that uh, when our children resume, they're not going to pay their school fees. Maybe they should stay at home for like three weeks. So when I get some more money, I will pay. He said, ah, no. Why will you? Uh, no. You know you must, you must not be left out. So let's use this school fees to buy the ashray B and do the party for you. So our children will stay at home. I said, ah. I said no, my children can't stay at home. Oh. Ah. So what was going to happen? Now, at that point, she's already, she will be the one that will be advising you because she's already feeling it. I said, ah, no. They will not, uh, don't worry. If that is the money you want to buy, let them go to school first. Oh. Ah. Our children must go to school first. Eh. Ah. But I was saying before, you didn't understand. That's the way it works. It's intelligence and love. You don't have any reason to fight. You can disagree. You can misunderstand each other. But have an understanding that there's a place that we must come together. Come together. Or you ask your husband. Ah, hello, baby. Come, come. There's one rat. There's one rat in the house. Ah, call this person to help you kill it. Because he, he can't reason. So I will leave, leave where I am. Because there's rats. No, he would never. He said, come. He said, ah, maybe. Let's go, let's go. In fact, if you trouble him too much, you won't pick your call again. Because what you are feeling, you do not present it logically. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. So whatsoever a woman feels, you must be able to present it to the reasoning of the man. You now call the man and say, baby, please, you need to come home now. What is it? Please, there's something very serious, an emergency you need to attend to. It's about to, please, can you please be on your way? He does not want to know what it is. He's already on his way because he's already thinking one, two, three, four. Is he my child? Is he our house? Is he water? When you now go to him, now say, ah, um, there's this rat in the house. <laughs> like, ah, because of rat, at least you have come. In those days, my wife would tell me that there's cockroach. I hate cockroach. I would look at ah, I want the cockroach you that by new. <laughs> I, I don't know you that you grew up in a house that you sleep with cockroach. You now marry someone. Like, ah, cockroach. You'll be looking at. Ah. Are you, what is this cockroach? So anytime I hear cockroach, I close my door. But what's the big day? Guess what? She learned how to kill cockroach. <laughs> you will not be fighting, say, hey, you're supposed to do that. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. All right, the last scripture. The last scripture is First Peter chapter three, verse seven to eight. Amplified classic. Can you help me? First Peter chapter three, verse seven to eight. In the same vein, you married men should live considerately with your wives. With what? With an intelligent recognition. Please, let's look at the screen. Look up, look up, look up. Let's take this scripture together. Once we go. In the same way, you married men should live considerately with your wife, be it an intelligent recognition of the marriage relation, honoring the woman as physically the weaker, but realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace of God, a merited favor of life. Let's continue. In order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off. Otherwise, you cannot pray effectively. Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit. Now, that scripture, 
Make us understand that it is intelligence to recognize weaknesses. It is what? Intelligence to recognize weaknesses. Intelligent recognition. Recognize weakness with strength and strength intelligently. He said, honoring physically weaker, even though you are weak yourself. You know, the Bible says weaker. That means you yourself, you are weaker. So, you honor the woman because you understand that you are weak. She's just weaker. It's not that she's bad. It's not that she's bad. Your wife knows how to cook, but she doesn't know how to serve. Don't, don't, don't activate, don't empower her weakness. You now bring visitors to the house. And you know that your wife does not know how to serve. What do I mean by your wife doesn't know how to serve? She give, she just carry the thing. The way she sees it. You know, there's a way a husband must be served. Husband, do, you have, do, you, do I have witness in the house? Are you expected to be served anyhow? I, I will leave money for this, leave money for that in this uh, season. Uh, and they will not give me one small meat. And I was in big, big meat in the plate of other. I said, ah, please come here. What, what, what is happening here? You know? And you brought visitors to the house. And you discover that all the good, good meat and everything is what she gives to visitors. And if you'll be eating, I mean, you'll be checking the food of the visitors like this. So when they leave, they will now be rancor. What do you mean? I'm fighting. It's not necessary. If you have studied that that is a weakness of your wife, don't empower it. Don't enable it. And how will you do that? You already know. There's nothing wrong. I go to the kitchen and say, uh, baby, let's serve it like this. Let's serve it like this. Because you are empowering the weakness of your wife. You know your wife. Anything you tell her is as good as being heard. Do you get that? You know that not only your wife, you know your friend is not good at keeping information. Don't enable their weakness. Don't empower them. Don't give them information that you don't want to hear outside. That's how to love intelligently. I love you. But I understand your weakness. I want to empower it. That different way we empower the weakness of our spouse. And we still go against them for it. You know your wife is not accountable. You know you as a man, you are not good at money. That's why in some groups... Some association, when they choose you as treasurer, and you know your pocket is leaking, humbly reject it. Else you will go in debt to debt. You love your organization very well, but you must love intelligently. They are nominating you. Huh? You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. And you know you are not good at it. Or they nominate your wife, and you know ah. Mm. Or they nominate your husband. Ah. Mm. The best way to love your wife or husband at that point is to whisper, baby, reject it. That is loving. So why will you give people opportunity to make errors so that you can beat them? Honor your wife. You are weak, she's weaker. From that understanding, finally, Realize that you are joint heirs of grace. Listen, the same grace, you are, you are no better than each other. But you are enjoying grace together. Understand that? So that your prayer will not be cut off or lack, for lack of intelligence in relationship. Intelligent loving is loving people according to knowledge. Understand people. Know them. And relate to them based on who you have known. Understand people's weaknesses and love them intelligently. Do not empower people's weakness. Delegate their weaknesses to wisdom. I want you to write this down. Delegate their weaknesses to wisdom and leverage their strength for excellence. 
what did I say? Delegate their weakness to wisdom and law and leverage their strength for excellence. Deal with other people's weaknesses with wisdom, intelligence, and leverage their strengths for excellence. You will discover we will live together in peace. There is no problem. Listen, I have a philosophy and I'm pretty simple now. If you disrespect me or if you do something against me, I don't longer fight you. I don't fight people again. I'm not born again. But you know what? I want to go and work on myself because result is the cure to insult. You were able to insult me because my result is not evident enough not to be insulted. So instead of getting angry with you, I love you intelligently. I'm not angry with you. I will go work on myself. I'll go work on myself. I'm driving and they are passing all those big men and they say me I should stop. It can be annoying. Uh, or you feel this station, I want to buy fuel. And they are coming passing them. And you are, hey, ha, ha, mm, it's not necessary. Endure the moment and go home and work on yourself. Next time you are coming to filling station, make sure you are going to the point that you are coming. You are not coming. It's your driver that is coming with Mopo. There's no reason to fight. But we understand the place of intelligence in love. We will live with each other with wisdom. And there's no reason to fight. I pray for everyone here today. Every family and every relationship that is experiencing difficult times. The Lord is going to give you wisdom to continue to live in the name of Jesus. Listen, when you ask for empowerment and grace, and you keep, your strength is kept apart against the weakness of others, you may eventually disappoint God. But when you ask for wisdom to live with people, you discover that you please God. Moses was sent by God to deliver the children of Israel. They frustrated him. And God was still angry with him. Do you know what God was trying to say? You allow frustrated people to frustrate you. And I told you from the beginning that these people are frustrated. They are in bondage. They are this. So Moses was expected to love them based on their understanding and level. I will love you based on your understanding and level. Love me based on my understanding and level. What I serve pastors, I may not be able to serve you. What I tell pastors to go and do and they go immediately, if I tell you, I may need to drag you. So I don't need to drag you. I don't need to put you in position that will expose your weakness so that I can castigate you. I don't need to put you in places that, will, that you will fumble so that I can be disgraced. No. So when you love each other intelligently, you understand each other, we know each other's challenges, then we'll relate that way. I pray that the Lord is going to help in Jesus' name. I want you to close your eyes this morning and speak to God and say, Lord, wisdom, intelligence. I receive in my marriage, in my relationship in the name of Jesus. Receive grace and wisdom this morning in the name of Jesus.